through the intervening. Of course, um, the, uh, the ideas, uh, rather than particular manifestations of those ideas. Um, and although there were one or two diagrams, block diagrams of complete machines, they were, com they were pretty well incomprehensible. One uh, couldn't quite follow them out in any, in any detail. But uh, um, there was, um, it was quite clear how you would design the various parts of a computer, the various parts that were discussed at some considerable length. And in fact, it was in Philadelphia, immediately after the course was over, I stayed on for a week or two, that I began to sketch out the ideas. Uh, Jim Wilkinson, National Physical Lab. I too would like to comment on the uh, colloquia that uh, Maurice Wilkes held at Cambridge in the early days. They still remain for me perhaps the highlight of life uh, in the computer science field. And a nice thing about them was in those days, uh, most of us talked about most of the things that were going on. Sometimes the talks would be on hardware, sometimes on what would now be called software, or, or as we usually refer to as programming. Sometimes the lectures were on a topic in mathematical physics, perhaps, with, uh, with the object of, of discussing how the problem might be solved on the computer. It was a great pity that as the computer field grew, those, uh, that series gradually died out. Its place was taken by other meetings all over the place, but they never fulfilled the same function as the early, uh, the early meetings at Cambridge. I think they were outstanding. What I've got to remark is uh, a very general remark. Huh? John Mockley. <laughs> uh, uh, what I have to remark is a very general remark. Uh, I don't know quite how to put it, really. But it seems as if uh, we are uh, getting further and further into the situation where uh, nobody knows just exactly how to define what to talk about and where they draw the lines and so on. I think uh, Maurice is uh, having that problem. We're all having that problem. Um, I guess we're in a worse position than trying to decipher a Rosetta Stone. <laughs> they, uh, uh, in the paper which uh, Eckert uh, uh, sent here for me to read uh, at a later part in this program, why, uh, he made a point uh, a little more than I had uh, thought of making in various other times, the point that not only was the ENIAC capable of executing a subroutine, whereas the original Mark I was not, but that it was capable of executing nested subroutines. And there'll be plenty of people here, I guess, including uh, uh, Los Alamos uh, mathematicians and so on who can attest to the fact that, uh, that all of these possibilities and capabilities existed right there. So uh, from my point of view, the, uh, the use of subroutines in, in problems uh, was something which was just so natural and all you wanted to do was to uh, get as many people as possible acquainted with the idea. And that, of course, was a, a great virtue of uh, a first book, for instance, that uh, does acquaint as many people as you can possibly uh, get to read the book uh, as to uh, the virtue of organizing uh, problems which you're now going to code in a way in which you uh, minimize the amount of uh, 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 redundancy of labor, you might say, that you can use the same coding over and over and over again and that you can nest such pieces of coding and so forth was, as I say, one of those ideas which, uh, well, the nearest thing I can think of uh, sometimes to uh, uh, illustrate this is a very old and well-known thing about the man who uh, was told that uh, uh, prose was a very uh, interesting form of speech and. Uh, and then learned that he had been speaking prose all the time. And uh, he never knew that. <laughs> so it is with the subroutines, and so it is with uh, lots of ways of uh, programming machines, partly stored, a little more stored, or whatever. Why, uh, they are gradations, and uh, 
we're going to have quite a time, I guess, uh, figuring out how it went with uh, the ideas of Babbage on up through what happened on the uh, ENIAC and what happened on all the other machines. Uh, there is, I suppose, a way of representing all this as a constant uh, gradation and progression. And uh, the same thing ap applies, incidentally, to, in my mind, to the idea of flowcharts. I don't know whether flowcharts are good or bad. I don't know whether go-to statements are good or bad, and a lot of other things that other people uh, think are uh, very important uh, uh, measures of how good your programming is and things of that sort. Uh, important thing is be logical. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, th that, that interests me because that John should say that it was quite obvious to him that uh, subroutines were the thing because he certainly, he certainly implanted that idea in my mind. Trapado from Stanford. Uh, is there any, or could you summarize some differences between the way you, you thought of programming in those days and the way, for example, people here in the States thought about it? Is there any, apart from this emphasis on subroutines, anything else you could comment about? Well, I don't know. This may come out. I can tell you uh, what um, we did. Um, and other people will tell you what they did. Not everyone thought subroutines were a good idea, by any means. Um, there were people who uh, thought a nice big flowchart and jumping all around was a better idea. Of course, there were overheads. You see, the wheel of jump took two instructions. You know? And uh, in the small memories of those days, uh, it was rather a lot. Uh, I think we, we I, I think not everybody uh, put the same emphasis as we that we did on what it w would now be called programming methodology though a lot of people did Svoboda UCLA you see 1947 I was at Princeton and, and I got uh, some sketches written personally for Neumann and maybe I was wrong, but I understood that he meant the subroutines already in his sketches. So that, you see, when I came to Prague, one of the papers written by one of my students, Pukorny, in 1951, in which I have here, here with me, unfortunately in Czech, described subroutines, but under influence of my visit in 1947, in yes. so that you see, I am a little bit at loss at oh, the yes. date which we should put at the subroutine as such. Well, it's, as, as John Morkley says, it's an obvious enough idea. Van Neumann wasn't interested in programming methodology, really. Uh, he, he, his interest, uh, uh, the early days, obviously, before I came on the scene, he was clearly interested in in the, as a mathematician would understand the principles of computer design. Uh, and then he was very interested in what sort of problems you could do. I mean, how much storage capacity you needed for hydrodynamical calculations and that sort of thing at the mathematical level. But I don't think he was ever interested in programming methodology. And I remember explaining to him myself in uh, 1950, the, the, the Wheeler jump, and the idea of that way of entering closed subroutine, he, he, he was quite tickled by the idea. But uh, I, don't think, I don't think he was interested in, in programming methodology, though I have no doubt he would use the term subroutine as everyone did in, the, in those days. He didn't use a word, but he sketches. Yes. By showing well, yes. yes. Alpha, beta, and those lines connecting, and then you find the loop. Mm. Was the equivalent yes. of a uh, uh, Knuth from Stanford. I, I just wanted to mention, uh, I, I recently reread von Neumann's uh, uh, discussion of programming, and the, the, the final example in, in the uh, series of three, uh, of three things is about subroutines and about how, how to uh, write a loading routine which would relocate subroutines from a library. 
the um, uh, the uh, the way he did it, however, was was uh, much less efficient than Wheeler's uh, jump, and he he specifically said you wouldn't want to use a subroutine unless it was quite a large one because of this overhead. And for example, you see, see Wheeler's method was very was very brilliant. It said load in, load the accumulator with this instruction itself, which just happens to have the address of itself in it. That's the 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 pun involved. But uh, von Neumann would would take a uh, a series of instructions which would uh, uh, load um, a constant saying where to go after the subroutine and store this into a fixed location inside the subroutine itself without using the registers f for the communication. So it was a much less efficient way, but the, but the, uh, the, the method was certainly dis discussed there, but certainly not, but not in, a, in such a powerful way. And, and the, the methodology, the, the writing, the writing about programming strikes me as being very methodological, but not in what we would now uh, ag agree with uh, as a as a desirable methodology. But it was a, it was it was a form of saying here, do the program this way, and then you do this, and then you then you do your static coding of, of boxes with Roman numerals and so on. Uh, it was just a different uh, kind of methodology than uh, is now popular. I think. That report had three names on it, I think. Uh, planning and coding of problems for the, f for something or other. <laughs> no, the, no, Burks, uh, Burks, oh, Goldstein, no, uh, uh, Burks uh, was actually a contributor, though, to the, uh, I mean, they, they credited him with uh, some ideas, but he wasn't me mentioned as an author in that particular. Wheeler, Cambridge University. I would like to make one or two comments about the film. It's my recollection that that was an excellent, excellent film, but that did not actually represent the way in which the computer was run. <laughs> uh, in this particular case, uh, one had programming advisors, and I think it is a very strong fact that in the early days, the system was such that most people did their own programming. They did not rely on a programming advisor. And I think this was true of the majority of programs which went on. This makes a far better film to show actually what happened and how things should be run. But in actual fact, I think it's true that most people, uh, the system was such that most people were made to do their own programming. There was no separate coding. Uh, no coding advisors. You couldn't get advice from your colleagues and neighbors, and this was excellent. Uh, I'd li also like to make a second comment about subroutines. Uh, firstly, everybody has this idea. Uh, it is perfectly natural. I think there are some side effects of what happened at Cambridge, which, looking back, we can see. One is there are umpteen ways of making closed subroutines. But it did so happen that the initial orders which were put in uh, had found space for one particular constant, which was part of the jumping method. And this essentially didn't say, you must use this method, but it did give a self-discipline that all people used the same methods. Uh, these methods were used in the library, and so this resulted in a common background uh, of the programming of the people doing programming, which was very helpful. Uh, it was very much easier. They could follow the accustomed rules and get results. And this, I think, led to it being very much easier to run programs under those constraints than it might have been under a free-for-all system, which happened in some other places. I think we have come to the coffee hour.